Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Miss Kobashi's Dragon Maid S episode number 9. Alright, um, the previous episode, um, again, uh, three section, uh, three small little stories. The first story where uh, Sota wants to make something for his dad for, his, for the Father's Day and, she wa uh, and he wants to do it on his own and by the end of it he is able to do it and it's like a nice little thing where he is able to accomplish uh, accomplish something using magic himself so like that was like a, sm a small little story then we had kobayashi getting sick toru freaking out because she knows that humans are very what can i say um very uh, weak in like you know in regards to dragons they can die anytime and you know all the other stuff and because of her reluctance to uh, rely on other humans he she tries to do something on her own goes to her uh, world goes back to her world brings the thing which you know like uh, which makes uh what do you call it which uh, which cures which cures uh, the fever and yeah and it has a little side effect oh she kind of turns uh, becomes a little cat for quite a few times uh, quite a few uh, for for a moment and then she <laughs> Like everything is all back to normal again that was that and the ending portion we see um ilulu uh finding a doll which has been like you know in her in the shop someone must have like kept it there and she tries to track her track the person down and uh, uh i forgot i also i always forget the guy's name what's the guy's name take wasn't it yeah Take, Take also helps her and by the end of it she's able to find it and it has also connection to her own emotions because she also kind of like left a doll behind and regretted it ever since so yeah she doesn't want anything anything like that to happen to someone else so yeah like everything's all good she brings the doll back the owner is happy happy ending so that was like the previous episode so yeah let's get started this is episode number nine let's see what more stuff we have and um i'm sure we're going to get into the serious portion in this or from the next episode because that's how the animes usually go you know you know especially size of life animes where there's like a little portion in the middle where there's everything's happy and everything and then it becomes a little serious and then it ends in a good note so let's see so without further ado let's get started this is miss kobayashi's dragon mate s uh, uh episode number nine yeah nine so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right so here's the countdown three two one go working conditions what <laughs> Oh, Jim. It's improving. It was even bad, better before, worse before. Oh, my God. Mm. Great. Yes, the loan, um, <laughs> uh, uh, what can I say? The lone person who wants to fight against all the, I don't know what to say, anyways. <laughs> oh boy. I wanted to come out, with, come out with something clever, but it did not register in my mind. I was unable to complete my sentence. <laughs> Oh my god, all right. Okay. Uh.
Hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. However, oh my god. Expansion of person. Oh, that won't happen. <laughs> People. Oh, oh, that's why. Um, yeah. Redo it. Yes. Not good enough. Okay, number two. <laughs> what? Oh. They must. Oh. Um. Wait, that was easy. But I think it's yeah. <laughs> True. Let's give up and get back to all right. Yeah. Oh my god, this is even thicker. Oh boy. Huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, they have like, oh my god. Work behavior. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> but no one will believe her. Everyone will think like they're, she was stalking everyone. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> I don't think yeah. Oh. Damn. Yeah. Hmm. Oh no. <laughs> Maybe promotion. I don't know. Uh Oh this guy Oh yeah His face is kind of scary I don't know Yeah Oh, okay. <laughs> hmm, okay. Oh. Eee. <laughs> what? Oh. Yeah, he is freaky. I, I told you, his face kind of... Uh. Yeah. Hmm. Uh... <laughs> Chocolate and no sugar. Oh my god. There'll be sweets and oh, okay. 
Everyone came for the sweet scent, I think. <laughs> oh, Toru's here. Oh, that's right, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, what did you do? Logic and fallacies. Hmm. What? <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> that was her like reason. Oh no. It'll be all gone. Um <laughs> Oh god. Uh, oh no, I feel like... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Letter. Oh. All right. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay. Well, the sweets will have to come later. Okay. <laughs> Fishing. All right. Oh my god. Yeah, I I knew it was something like that. I was fished. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Okay, show that's cooking. Ah! Bro. Oh, the clairvoyance, I think. Oh, or maybe not. She just saw that. <laughs> yes. That was easy. It's not that easy for to fish, you know? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> wow, she's eating a lot. Hmm. Damn, the animation. Um, Elma, you need to keep an eye out. Oh, great. Ah, no, Kanma is there with them, so it'll be fine. <laughs> Use a clear voice. You can, I think so. <laughs> Use a clear voice. Yes. Wow. Oh, that was no. Oh my god. Wow, she's quite. That means he's quite strong. He can like block the clear voice. Like that's Elma you're talking about. She's one of the. Greatest dragons. Like to block that. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> She's like, what the hell is he even talking about? Oh no. Yeah. Wow, they're going up completely opposite direction. Nah, that's just a, a concerned dragon. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> oh boy. <laughs> Oh, it's a bear. Um, great. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, hard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um. Wow. Everything's eating for her. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Flask nectar. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, Ilulu. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God, Take. <laughs> Uh, that's awkward. Yeah. There are various reasons behind it. It's full of Elma. What? <laughs> well, Fafnir. Hmm. I wonder what's the matter. She has not eaten... Wow, she has not eaten her parfait. That's a big... What can I say? Indication that something's wrong. Yeah, what's happening? No, no, what? Wait, what? Oh. Yeah, like, what's happening? Whoa. God. Oh my God. Ooh. What? Wait, what's happening? My god, the... Oh boy, the animation! <laughs> okay. Wow! 
The what? Oh my god. Alright. Damn. Ha! <laughs> Fafnir is like... My god. Yeah, why did he, she... What, why, why? What? Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, okay. Even watching ants whatever. Yeah. My God. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay, I can understand where, where she's coming from. <laughs> All this for that? Okay, well... <laughs> okay, wow. Yeah. This is overboard. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Fafnir's like, yeah, I never expected this, but... Mm, yeah, <laughs> and this is normal, everyday occurrence. <laughs> Just like watching anime, live, you know? <laughs> yeah, all right. Time to go home. <laughs> God, that was something. <laughs> wow. Now what? Oh, great. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Okay. My god, okay, that, that was good. Especially the last bit. <clears throat>
Okay, so that was episode 9. And I was not expecting the last, last portion especially. I, like, what can I say? Like, like it never kind of occurred to me that, she, like, Elma would be, gr not grudgeful, but would be, um, uh, what do you call it? Bothered by that. Because, as Toru said, she, it seemed like she was having fun in here, but... Yeah. Like, okay, let's just... Is there something else? Nope, that's the end. Alright, let's talk about this episode. Um, the first part, and this was re uh, really, uh, what do you call it, focused on Elma in, in a lot of ways. Yeah, like all the sections had Elma, I think. Hmm. So, um, the first thing is the whole situation of the <clears throat> overtime or overwork that the, the people, the employees have to go through in the company. And I think they, they did mention that the uh, boss of the company was Sota's dad. I can't remember if they mentioned it, but most probably they did. And I probably forgot it. So it was kind of like I was kind of shocked as, as soon as I saw that it was Sota's dad. But they like acted as if they knew that. Like, you know, also Elma as well. So I'm guessing they uh, mentioned that before. And I forgot it. But yeah. Now, <laughs> Sota's, <laughs> Sota's dad is freaky. I don't know what's up with his face. But he looks like one of those, um, <laughs> those characters with a hidden face, you know. Like in animes you have, like, there's this very normal looking harmless looking person and they have like crazy eyes they can like you know like do crazy stuff whenever they get mad or something <laughs> those type of characters he looked like <laughs> like he had a weird smile and, a, and his eyes were really freaky i don't know why but yeah like <laughs> anyways um so yeah so here uh, elma wanted to make everything better for the employees here because obviously like it's like a company um i think like in japan these are called black companies where uh like, you know like the people are kind of ex not exploited yeah kind of i think like you know like they are like they have to work very hard over time and stuff like and when they go back home they're all tired can't do anything like you know no like you no know, like very tough uh situation for the employees and I don't think it's that much in this company, like where Kobayashi works, but the uh, the stress and the work amount is quite huge because we can see that Kobayashi always kind of like, you know, works, 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 works. And um, I'm guessing Elma was like, nope, this, like, you know, I don't want this happening. So, <laughs> yeah, most, mostly because she herself wanted some free time to get her um, a limited version sweets or whatever. <laughs> And uh, yeah, she was very efficient, did so many paperwork, used clairvoyance, got everything like, you know, kind of settled to like, together and brought it in front of that boss, Sota's dad. And Sota's dad was like, no, yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and that was that so i don't know if we're going to meet him again so that's that probably we will but yeah he's he's scary he's freaky i don't know what else to say his his face is scary and <laughs> my god yeah and then uh okay that was that and then we get to the next section where they go on a little trip elma sota taikawa and kana so, I, you know what I was expecting? I was expecting, like, you know, she was starting to eat her sweets and the children came, like, you know, when the children were at their door, I thought they would be like, okay, let's, like, you know, play, hang around. They would come inside the house and they would be like, oh, what's that? That's sweets? I want some. <laughs> and mom will be like, like, you know, like, obviously, like, they're kids. Like, you should definitely, like, you know, like, she's supposed to, like, what can I say? What do you call it? They're just little kids. Like, you know, if they want something, they... She, she, like, it would be cruel not to give them. 
so i think she would like i thought it would be something like she would be very <laughs> sad because she had like you know got that uh sweets after so long and wanted to eat them and now these kids are here and yeah she'll have to like you know share it and all that stuff i thought it would be something like that but that was not where in the direction it went mm, they went out and uh, <clears throat> yeah they had a little picnic <laughs> and the kids went on their own now here's one thing um well sota sota sota's pretty you know like wrong in the in the sense that she was he was able to stop the clairvoyance and even detect it because elma is one of the strongest dragons of you know her world on par with toru so being able to not only detect that she's trying to I, i'm guessing okay you know what i actually realized why she was he was able to do it he himself mentioned it he said that luqua used to do that to him so i'm guessing he got accustomed to it and got sensitive to it you know whenever someone like was trying to peek on him and <laughs> and luqua is like a goddess you know because of guata and uh, she she's definitely the strongest uh, i'm guessing luqua is probably on par with fafnir and even stronger than toru and elma i'm not sure about the power level but i think so because that's because of quatel so he's definitely one of the strongest and <clears throat> tota being able to block her attempt at clairvoyance <laughs> obviously made it very easy for him to detect elma's clairvoyance and <laughs> stop that okay yeah like i was like how did he get so strong and then i realized that oh my god like she has he has got he has gotten personal training from quetzal quatel so <laughs> definitely he's like you know that's how he got strong but yeah anyways okay so now <laughs> the funny thing is that psycho still has not realized that these are all dragons like a lot of people know that they're dragons do they like just a sec like sota knows like obviously sota is one of the magicians one of the mages so he knows um take knows well, but fafnir is living with take so that's why he knows yeah i i think like maybe in, in the future psycho will also kind of get to know uh, most probably because she is still a kid <clears throat> you know they're kind of not letting her know that like these are like actual dragons so i'm sure she'll like you know she'll realize that or she'll get to know that sooner or later that kanna is a dragon and like you know all the other people here toru uh, elma they're all dragons so but yeah for, uh, uh, like you know currently she doesn't know uh, like so that you can you know kind of like i'm guessing made her forget that scene where like elma kind of became that dragon and I was like, "Oh my god, look at that. That was the drag the like, thing that we saw in the river." And so that kind of knocked her out. <laughs> god. <clears throat> and uh Yeah, and uh <clears throat> yeah, that was that. And <laughs> she gets a little flower, she sucks out the nectar because that's all, like you know, that's all that she does. <laughs> all is wanting sweet things. So yeah. Okay, that was the second part. Now, the third part is like I knew something serious is going to happen when I saw that Elma does not did had not touched her parfait. It's like melting. So, or maybe who knows? Like maybe off camera she ate it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think that's more like it because this is Elma we're talking about. She she won't really just give up on a parfait. But yeah, okay, now <clears throat> they they do the start the little fighting and so at the beginning i was really unable to understand what she was trying to do she was saying that like you know you are dangerous like you know you can you know you're just um you know doing this what, what did she say just then yeah you've claimed the hearts of the humans <clears throat> like i was like what why like why now like everything like this has been happening for quite a long while so why is she suddenly you know freaking out about that now currently 
so like and then it started making sense when she actually <coughs> started talking about everything and okay just a sec all right so the thing that uh, fafnir says is that she has been used she has been betrayed so she still does not trust and um what do you call it uh, trust humans and that's why she mistrusts Toru but here Kobashi was able to get that like what they're actually trying to do like you know like Elma was trying to do where because Fafni says that she mistrusts Kobayashi I think Fafni also took it at face value you know when um the, when Elma went and asked uh, was talking with Fafni like I think like mm, Elma probably said something like I need to like you know like uh, Toru is doing something like this like she's trying to like you know uh, claim the hearts of humans or whatever and uh, Elma said that I'm sure that she is going to get what do you call it uh, you know like do something bad or something like that she said I'm sure of it and then I'm sure Elma said something like I need to take her back to our world and Fafni said that okay and that's why Fafn brought them here. And I think Fafn took it at face value because that because the thing that he says here kind of proves that he says that uh, uh, Elma does not trust uh, Toru because she has been betrayed and everything. But Kobayashi got it, and she said that it's not actually that the case. <coughs> and. All right. So the thing that's happening here is Elma. She 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 has always been uh, helpful and I'm guessing trustful of humans and even in her other world. So when she she was been uh, worshipped as a like you know deity or a goddess, and and she said that uh, you yourself told me that Toru like Toru herself told her not to get too accustomed to this so why is she getting accustomed to this now here that was like the main thing that like everything like there was a lot of things that was coming into play here because first of all elma um like that's the first reason why she got frustrated here because she realizes that like in her world you know toru is the one who told her not to get close to humans and now here she's kind of like you know like getting close to humans herself and like kobayashi is there and all of them are there and <clears throat> and yeah okay so the problem here is not that the problem here is that elma was actually getting frustrated because she got accustomed to toru in her own world you know they hang hanged out together and like you know like they were like friends good friends there so the thing that she's frustrated about is that the same toru who told her not to get close to humans you know kind of became friends with her had like you know hanged around with her and all she suddenly disappears and when elma comes to this world i'm guessing looking for toru she finds her the same toru who once told her not to become close and friendly with humans you know that same toru uh, like living with Kobayashi, getting closer to humans, like you know, kind of uh, having fun with them, and like that. And then, like you know, like she, like that. That probably made her frustrated because it's as if like you know, it's it's like a weird thing. Like she was contradicting. She's contradicting herself. Like Toru, the same person who said that don't get closer to humans. When she comes here, she says she sees that she's getting closer to humans, and she like you know like. And the, the friend that she had in uh, the other world is not there anymore. So, and like, basically, I, in, in one word, you can say that Elma was lonely. That's the most simple way you can explain the situation. <clears throat> and that's when she explains that the food that I eat, ate there was better because you were there with me you know we we hanged out together <clears throat> and yeah and then she says yet one day you disappeared 
do you have any idea how worried i was when i heard you had died then when i finally found you there you go you were cold to me this this was the problem biggest problem while you were friends with humans yeah be friends with me like you were back in those days so yeah that was basically it so things that she was not able to digest here is that the same toru who did not like humans suddenly started liking humans and the same toru who hanged out together with her suddenly started to become cold towards her so it's like complete opposite of what she was in her world and here and that's one thing that's one change she wasn't able to properly fathom but <laughs> like as <laughs> as Kobashi said in one of the previous uh, like you know uh, episodes the more closer you are the more you fight so like <laughs> that was basically it in a way because because she was like you know like kind of good friends with her before she used to kind of bicker with her like you know kind of um <laughs> what do you call it uh annoy her and like you know like all kind of like they were, they were like cats and dogs with each other but that's because they were good friends before but unfortunately elmo wasn't able to properly understand that because of her own insecurity because she thought that yeah she just like forgot that we were friends and she's having fun with all the like you know humans here and she forgot about me like that's something that she she like you know obviously like that was her insecurity but good thing that she actually brought everything to light here light in here like you know what he her problem was why she you know what what's what's bothering her she actually told everything to toru and uh, yeah i think that's that's the best thing like no more misunderstanding basically so <laughs> I really was not expecting that like for something like this because uh what can i say i i never thought that uh, elma was kind of insecure like this i never thought like her like looking at her all these episodes i never would have guessed so yeah and then toru actually realizes and she's like you know scratching her head <laughs> my god okay and yeah and then they start fighting again that's because that's how they i guess communicate with each other <laughs> yeah like that was good and in a way i'm happy that everything kind of cleared up and yeah i'm guessing elma will be a lot more not uh what do you call it not insecure and uh, like you know after this hopefully because he like the problem here was that i don't know like i always said that toru is still distrustful of humans but the thing here is like toru starting to like you know trust humans and get to know them and she is actually progressing elma herself from the beginning was not so distrustful of humans she was kind of fond of them but because of the betrayal and stuff you know she became more like you know like friendly with toru so here's the thing um because coming here this is like a place full of humans toru is getting accustomed to this place adapting to it whereas elma is not she is she was getting adapted she was adapting to the place with the humans but not at the same pace as toru was because toru is kind of like you know really moving forward advancing becoming you know real like you know acquaintance with the other humans with them in the maid cafe with like you know all the other people here she's getting accustomed to them even though she herself says that i don't trust humans she's getting adapted to this place so she's making friends she's like you know hanging around with them normally whereas elma i've never seen elma hang around with anyone you know like not even talk with anyone only the the, the people that are in this show you know like uh, Tak uh, takia uh, take is the other human we have and all the other dragons kobayashi 
they are the only one that she actually talks to. I've never seen her actually talk to any other human. Whereas Toru, we can see like she, she talks with their neighbors, goes to the maid cafe and talks with, um, you know, like kind of converses with them and the other maids there. Like that's what's happening. So having no one to actually, sh like, you know, talk with made Elma feel insecure because she herself is saying that I am unable to make friends with the humans here. But I am like, you know, I'm not so like, uh, like I'm adapting not properly here, but Toru, the per same person who once told me that don't be chummy with humans is the one who's getting chummier and she is acting cold to me. Like this whole thing, I'm sure it, 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 it bothered her very much all this time. So I think a way to actually make, uh, what can I say? Like, you know, make the situation better is the best scenario would be Elma actually making friends other than the main cast here. You know? Some other people, some other humans become friends with them. That, I'm sure that will kind of, because I think that, like, that, as far as I can see, that's the main thing here. Because she doesn't actually have anyone to, like, she, she like, you know, works in her office, goes back home. There's no one in home. There's no one at home with her. You know, she's all there all, all alone. And she eats herself, like, like buys sweets, eats it herself alone again. And sometimes the kids come, she hangs out with them. Sometimes Kobayashi and, like, you know, Toru comes, she hangs out with them. That's that. Nothing else she does. You know? I'm sure this kind of is stressful in a way to her. Because loneliness is kind of a big thing here. Because another thing that I've noticed here is none of the dragons are alone in the way Elma is. Fafnir has uh, Takia, Koba, uh, uh, Toru has obviously Kobash, Ilulu is there, uh, like all the others, like, you know, Kana has them, Ilulu has them, they're like all together, Kobayashi and all of them, they have their neighbors, um, Toru goes to the mate cafe, she kind of interacts there, uh, Ilulu has uh, Take uh, in, in, uh, in the, what do you call it, mm, in her part-time job, Kana has her friends at school, you know, Saikawa, um, Lukwa has Sota, Elma has none, none of, no one, except the main cast to actually interact with. So that is the main thing I'm, I'm sure of it, because if there was someone with uh, Elma, just like all the other people here, all the other cast here, you know, someone, some friend, a, a roommate, well, probably, or someone else, you know, I'm sure this probably wouldn't have happened, this whole thing that was that's happening here insecurity thing because you know he's seeing that yeah i'm lonely but toru is not Toru is having fun so the same toru who was once friends with me she's like not looking at me at all so that probably made her mad and frustrated and that's what happens so yeah, anyways that was all everything became good by the end of it and fafni was like ah this is stupid she goes goes back home. <laughs> My God. Yeah. And yeah, that was it. So yeah. All right. So that was episode number nine of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So if you guys enjoyed my reaction, be sure to press the like button and subscribe. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed and comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, I'll check them out. So yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.